Hello everyone, it's me, no Haxer. In this video, we're going to be going over the best places to put wards, as well as how to place wards without putting yourself in danger by showing you some really cool tricks on placing wards on very specific areas on the map. I'm going to first show you the really cool locations where you can place wards, and then we'll go a bit more into why these locations are very effective. The first location is right over here. Let's say the enemy is invading your red buff and you want to make sure that no one's walking through this area. You can put a word right over the wall just like this. If you walk over from this left side and the enemy jungler is already waiting here, you'll almost certainly die if you walk straight in like this. So putting the ward over the wall from Krugs is a much better alternative. The next warding spot is right over here in the dragon pit. Now, if you look really closely, you can see that there's a little snail brown rock looking thing right over here. And if you put your mouse right over this brown rock and you click on it, you'll hit this dry bush and you can ward right over the dragon pit just like this into this dry bush. And this is super good because it saves you from walking over all the way in and placing a ward inside this bush. And this is such a common mistake for people to make, especially if you're on red side and you want to get vision in here. I'll see a lot of people just walk in like this, but placing the ward over the dragon pit is a much safer alternative. The third location is right over here. Once again, let's pretend we're red side. If you have this left wall right here and you want to get a ward into this bush in the river, all you really have to do is if you kind of take a look at this waterfall, you'll see that there's this big rock right here. And if you put your mouse a little bit more to the left, you'll be able to ward this bush right here. And this is super nice because once again, it'll save you from making the trip, getting too close to the bush. And you can just simply stay on this right hand side, ward very safely, and if a jungler is waiting there, then you avoid the gank. Now this last spot's very, very tricky. So I'm gonna do my best to explain this. So this ward is showing you how to ward all the way across over this distance into this tri bush, which is super, super important to know if you're blue side because Let's say you're pushing and you want to take this turret over here, then being able to ward this tribush is incredibly useful. So let's suppose that you want to push and take this turret and you want to ward this tribush over here. What a lot of people would do is that they would try to ward over the wall like this. And the way you ward this bush right here is that if you look at this tree and you look and you see how it's about to change colors right here, if you ward this spot right here, you'll get a ward inside. Now this is what a lot of people will do from blue side, which is reasonable because it's much better than walking over all the way like this and putting a ward here, where you can do over the wall. But it's still sometimes not safe because let's say if the jungler is someone like Jarvan, he can just EQ over the wall by the time you hug this wall right over here and you're gonna die anyways. So the next best alternative you can do is if you come to this side of the river, you can ward over the tri bush like this. Now, the way you do this is that you, if you look really closely, you see this little patch right here. It's right underneath these two twin trees. So just go ahead and right click right on this patch. And so you're really close to the wall like this. You're basically gonna look, you're gonna look like you're right under these two trees. Now, if you look right over here, there are these little pebbles you see. See this three pebble formation right here? If you see this bigger pebble out of the three, the one that's in the upper area, if you mouse right over this, you should see your cursor turns red, right? See how it's not red and now it's turning red right now? If you ward right here, you will get a ward in this tri bush, just like that. And that's a very tricky one to do. You have to be exactly pixel perfect with it. And a lot of people don't know about this word, even professional players. And so this is really gonna help you push very safely because so many people will not suspect it. As you can see, this tri bush is now completely open for vision. And now you can walk back and safely push this lane if you need to. And all these words also apply to the other side of the map as well. So. For example, the one with the red buff, if you come to this side of the map, you can ward it over the wall like this. If you go inside the barren pit, uh, it's a little different on the barren pit since there's no snail, but usually what I like to do is that I like to look over here and I like to see 
this little gap right here. If you see this like per, if you look at this pink rock, you can go a little bit more to the left and you'll be able to ward that tribe bush. Similarly over here, if you hug this very right wall and you kind of put your mouse a little bit around where this gray area starts to form a V. And if you go a little bit under that, like this, you'll be able to ward this bush right over here. And I actually don't believe you can ward from here over here. I believe it's only from this side is what people have confirmed and also from what I've confirmed. So you can apply a lot of these same wards on the bottom area of the map into the top area of the map. It's completely symmetrical, which is what's nice about League of Legends, outside of that one special ward. Now I'm gonna briefly go over how to ward without putting yourself in danger. So for many support champions, there are abilities that you can use to grant you temporary vision. For example, Zyra has plants that she can spawn. Another good example is Soraka's Q. So instead of walking over to a bush like this and placing your ward inside of here, instead what you can do is that you can use your ability to grant vision from a distance farther away. So for example, for Soraka, let's say I want to ward this bush. I can queue the area right around it. As you can see, grants a little bit of vision and this lets me see if there's an enemy there. Now let's say you don't have, let's say you have a long range ability, but you don't have a skill that gives you vision. So let's say I'm a support champion who doesn't have an ability that gives me vision, but instead is just a really long range ability. One really good trick you can do is that if you have Harry or Comet as your rune of choice, what you can do is that you can use those long range abilities into bushes first. That way, if you see your ability procs area or comet, then you know someone's there. So for example, Soraka's silence field does a little bit of damage. So instead, let's say I forget to use my Q, I can always place my E, and you can see that my area instantly flies over. And that's how you know that someone is there, because area did damage to something inside this bush. And you can use this for so many different ways. For example, if you're bot side and you're laning, you can always throw your, you can use your spells to see if an enemy supports in bushes by seeing if your abilities go onto them. You can also check to see if you gain gold from Frostfang if you have an ally nearby. That's also a really good way of seeing if someone is there. Now let's go over how to place wards around objectives. So for an objective like Dragon, there's a couple key areas that you want to cover. First key area is obviously inside the dragon pit. This is where you'll almost always place a pink ward. When you place your pink ward, it's important to note that if you don't put your pink ward inside the dragon pit, starting from this kind of invisible line from this rock to this rock, if you do not put your pink ward inside this area in the dragon pit, you will not be able to see all the invisible wards inside the circle. So if I place my pink ward just outside the dragon pit, I can't see a ward that's hidden a little further back. So every time you're planning to do dragon, you should always have one ward inside the pit, so that way you know if there's any wards inside the circle. Now let's talk about wards outside the dragon pit. This bush is obviously very important. I would always put my... If your team has a second pink ward, I would highly suggest putting the second pink ward in this bush right here, because this is going to be a very contested area from both red side from people walking down like this or blue side from walking in like this. Speaking of these two bushes, these two bushes are also very important. If you're on red side, you always want a ward right over in this bush so that way you can see if the enemies are going to be walking in through the river like this or if they're going to be poking or using a blast cone from over here. Alternatively, you can always put a ward over the dragon wall like this, so that way you can see the blast cone, and if you have a long ranged AD carry like Caitlyn, she can shoot the blast cone over the wall, and that'll help deny possible junglers from jumping over the wall and taking this dragon. For the blue side, one ward that's really nice that can cover this path walking down is right over the wall, just like this. Another good ward to place for blue side is if you want to see this ramp over here, you can simply hug this left wall, 
and just place a ward in this very far right corner, right like here, and you can see enemies walking down just like this. The very last pink ward spot I would recommend is in this bush right here. This is a very important bush because in early levels, when mid laners are going to be shoving the lane constantly, having this access path towards Dragon via this bush right in the middle of the lane is incredibly important. Both sides really like having this bush because it really allows you to find picks very easily. For example, if I'm a Thresher Blitzcrank, I can easily look for hooks and walls over the walls like here if I have vision like this. And so having constant vision denial in this push is incredibly important. Once again, to reiterate, I would say the order of importance of wards around Dragon is one inside the Dragon Pit, two in this bush right here, three in this bush right over here. If I had to pick a fourth, I would say in the middle of the river right outside Dragon is also a great alternative. The area around Baron is also very similar to Dragon. so. We can use the same logic and apply it to this area of the map since it's symmetrical. Once again, any pink ward you place inside the circle will be able to see any ward that's placed. So make sure you have your first Baron ward always this inside the circle of Baron. The next most important pink ward is in this bush, very similarly to the dragon area. This is just the most contested area between both sides of the map. And third, this bush right here is very important for Baron because once again, once you get to the late game, you'll ha start to have people pushing the mid wave first to get mid priority and then making their way towards Baron. So having control of this area is very nice. Specifically for blue side, I would say putting a ward in the middle of the lane a little bit further down is really nice because with the same logic of having a ward inside this pink bush, Having a ward in the middle of the lane is really good. You can put a ward over this ramp to see the path from mid going into the barren area. This bush is also incredibly important because just like the dragon area, this bush gives you very direct access for a steal. So having a ward in this bush right here, or alternatively right over the walls, you can hit the blast gun is also nice. For red side, it's a very similar idea. You can ward over the wall just like this. You can also ward over the wall just like this if you want to see them going through the ramp area. Another not bad idea is to ward this area of the map because they can always use Blast Coon and walk to the left if the jungler wants to try to steal Baron. 